Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create these cool, interactive and beautiful dashboards so you can present your work and your key insights to your stakeholders. The tool we will be using for this project is R, a great programming language mainly used for statistical computing and graphics. Personally, I love R. It's a very simple language that contains a lot of different libraries that expand its use, and they're very easy to install. For this video, it would be handy to know the basics of R to be able to follow along and enjoy the process. Before we jump in, please like this video if you find this content useful and subscribe if you want to learn more about data analytics. So without further ado, let's go with the explanation. For our first step, we are going to set up the environment and install the necessary libraries. Once we open R, we are going to go to the console or to the source panel and write the following command, install packages followed by the C command, in order to install all the necessary libraries for this project at the same time. The first package that we're going to install is called Flash Dashboard. This is going to be the most important package for this project because, as you can tell by the name, it's going to allow us to create dashboards. The second package is going to be Tidyverse, a combination of different packages that help us pre-process and work with the data. The next packages are called HighCharter, a great library to create interactive visualizations, GT, a great one to create interactive data tables, HTML tools, a useful library while working with HTML outputs, like in our case, and finally, Viritis, a library that contains palettes of colors to personalize our plots. Once we finish entering these lines, we can execute the command with command enter and it should begin installing them. In my case, I'm gonna get an error when I execute these lines because I already installed these packages prior to this video. After the installation, we have to go to File, New File, Arc Markdown, from Template, select Flash Dashboard and click OK. Once we create it, we can start working in our project. The first thing we must do is to import all the libraries that we just installed. Next, we can start importing the data that we're going to work with. In our case, we're going to use two datasets. The first one contains Amazon Top 50 best-selling books from 2009 to 2019. And the second one contains all the songs from Bilbo Hot 100 since 1958. Both datasets will be in the descriptions for you guys to download it. First, we can start with the books data. We can call this dataset DF, standing for data frame, and use the following command to open it. Note that in my case, I also add show calls type if call false because I don't want to get any outputs from importing the data. Once the data is imported, we should view it to see if we have to clean any of it. As we can see, we have some duplicate rows. For that reason, we will use the instinct to remove the duplicates and add the keep all equal true to maintain the rest of the variables in the dataset. Next, we are going to rename the user rating variable to prevent some errors. Now we can start with the fun part, the actual creation of the dashboard and the graphs. First, we are going to make the title of the page. For the program to understand the title, we must add a line of equal signs below. Next, we will focus on the configuration of the dashboard. In our case, we will use two columns. The first one will be bigger and contain plots with more information. That's why we will leave the data wide with 650. That means that if the whole page has a total of 1000, these graphs will occupy 65% of the page. The other two commands, tab set and tab set fade, will split the columns into two separate tabs instead of two graphs, one on top of the other. Now let's create the actual graphs. The first one will represent the most popular authors by number of reviews. For this, we will have to count how many reviews each author has considering all their books. First, we will group by author and sum up all the reviews they receive on their books. Then we will sort the data to show the biggest values first by arranging the number of reviews in a descending order. 
And finally, we will just select the first 15 authors. Next, we will create a column plot with the authors on the x-axis and the number of reviews on the y-axis with our customized colors. To make the graph a bit prettier, we will add a theme. In my case, I like the Google theme. After, we are going to configure it what the users can see when they interact with the graph. In this plot, we will show them the number of reviews that each author has. Then we will add the title, subtitle and some credits. Finally, we should set up the colors we will use. This step is pretty simple, thanks to the Viridis package we installed earlier. Here are all the palettes available for this package. For the next graph, we are going to represent the most popular books based, again, on the number of reviews they received. For this, we will select the dataset sorted by descending order based on the number of reviews and select the top 15 rows. Next, we will plot it in the same way we did with the previous one, with the exception that we will show the bars horizontally. Now, let's demonstrate what we have done so far in our dashboard. For that, we have to click NICT and save it if you haven't done so already. As we can see, we have created the page books and our two plots in different tabs. So far, so good. Going back to the file, we have to start setting up the second column and the dashboard. In this column, we are not going to use different tabs, so we don't have to add anything in the column settings. In the title of the chart, because I don't want to show it, we are going to write no panting in the following way. The first plot we are going to make in this column is going to be a pie chart, showing the genres of the list. For that, we are going to group by genre and count how many times each one appears. Then we create the pie chart, where the x-axis is the name of the genres and the y-axis is the number of times they appear. For the user's interaction, we will transform it into percentage by adding the following command. Finally, for our final element of the dashboard, at least in this page, we are going to create an interactive data table showing the best books by user rating. For this, we are going to create a data frame filtering just the books with an average of 4.9 or higher. Then we will sort the data in the sending order and select the book's title and its author.
For the actual data table, thanks to the package HTML tools, we will add the scrolling option with the div command and add the following text. Then, to create the actual table, we will use the package GT. Before closing the parentheses, we can still personalize the table by adding a title, changing the font, styling the header, and more. For more information about this, I will leave a link below that shows you how you can personalize tables to your liking. Now, if you want to create another page, you can do so following the same process. In my case, I will do it analyzing the song's dataset. And that's all for this video. If you found it useful and you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to smash that like button and see you in the next one. Take care.